For this episode, we wanted to do something fun and share Chef's Chronicles. Yes, so these are memorable kitchen experiences that we've had. Hey everyone, I'm Vishon, the Tough Mama. Hey everyone, my name is Chef Claudia. One of my experiences that I've recently had, I broke down in the kitchen and I was about to give up with culinary school. Mm -hmm. um, if it wasn't for my husband, I think <laughs> I was going to be done. It was right around um, the middle of my, my culinary journey and I don't even remember what I was cooking. I know it was something simple. I was overwhelmed, I was tired, I was doing everything from being a mom, wife, taxi driver, you know, you name it, all of that, um, along with full-time culinary school and part-time jobs. So I about had it, I broke down, I cried in the kitchen, in the middle of my kitchen, and I was about, I was about to start yelling. That's how frustrated I just in, felt internally. But now that I think about it, it's funny. It's something that I had to go through in order to keep pushing me to, to want to finish. And that's one of my drives was seeing how much my husband cared about it and not letting me fail. Also letting my kids see that I wasn't about to give up. They saw mom struggling and they saw that, you know, I'm not gonna give up no matter how hard it was. It was tough. It was really hard, but you know, we overcame it. And now it's just a funny memory because I was like a little kid in the corner crying. Think of Julia from Julia and Julia in the movie. If you haven't seen that movie, I felt like Julia. At that moment, I did. I, I was done. I wanted to throw it all away. I did. I think I... I think I burned it or I don't remember what I did, but I ruined it and it was, it, it was fine. You know, I still had plenty more, um, ingredients to work with. So I wasn't completely in the ruin, but it was, it just felt awful at the time, but I was able to come back and thankfully, like I said, I had someone there and to help me keep pushing. And if you don't have anybody there to support you or keep going, cry it out cry it out or if yell sometimes yelling actually helps you know it's mm -hmm. it crying releases it helps you release everything that you're holding on to so if you're frustrated cry it out um mm -hmm. my thing is i like to rinse my hands with water when i'm feeling overwhelmed in the kitchen that's one of my rituals so when i go in i first wash my hands mm -hmm. um i ask that I just ask the powers that be that I get removed, my, that these feelings get removed from me so I can cook with love and good intentions. And I believe that helps a long way for me personally. But What a great ritual. I love yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. So I'm so glad you didn't give up, Chef Claudia, because yes. you're an amazing chef. Thank and, you. And sometimes we got to go through those challenges yeah. to push you through to the better version of yourself right so, awesome out for sure it was, it was yeah. tough but we made it we got this it's tattooed on me for a reason oh, that's, <laughs> right, that's right so i wanted to share a funny one you know mine was okay so i don't know about you guys but i went on this craze for a little bit where i wanted to go gluten-free so it's not like any of us have celiac or anything that would require us to go gluten gluten-free but i thought it would be good for health reasons and maybe a little weight loss you know and I have two sons and a beautiful husband, wonderful husband, and they are, they're usually pretty game on any of my experiments. And so here was my funny story. I decided to make a homemade pizza, homemade pizza crust, and I've made homemade pizza before, but never gluten-free. And I used a coconut flour uh, for the pizza crust. Okay, so no wheat flour or anything like that. And then I did the regular toppings and everything that my family enjoys. So I make this beautiful pizza. It looks gorgeous when it comes out of the oven. Mm -hmm. And my family is really hungry. And so, you know, I cut it in these beautiful triangles and then put it on the table. Well, they were hungry. And so I said, why don't you guys just go ahead and start. Grab yourself a slice. I'm going to just clean up a little bit and then I'll join you. So they're over there, they're, they're um, eating the pizza and I'm cleaning up and everything. 
And then I come over and I sit down and I see they're all at the table and I see their faces and I'm like, how is it? And every one of my beautiful sons and husband, they said, oh, it's, it's good. And I'm like, oh, okay, great. So then I took a slice, <laughs> took a bite, and literally the second the taste hit my mouth, I just spit it out. I'm like, this is awful. And then all of them were like, oh, thank God. And so they all, they all just like pushed away from the table. And I'm like, you guys were so nice. You didn't even tell me that it was terrible or, you know, it was unedible. And they're like, we don't want to hurt your feelings, but this is, this is gross. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. So then I'm like, well, we got two dogs. I'll just feed it to the dog. So I take my slice to put it down on the ground for the dog. And the dog smells it and walks away. <laughs> it won't even eat it. And so it's like the biggest joke in our house now about don't make gluten-free pizza. Now, I'm sure there's better versions, but the one I made was definitely not edible. <laughs> That's interesting. Okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry. What a what a beautiful family for them to just keep trying to eat it. <laughs> if it wasn't for you, they would probably kept swallowing. <laughs> yeah, they, they, I know. They're so kind. My husband's yeah. taught them to always show politeness yeah. to the, the one who cooks their food. Yeah. Even if it's burnt, even yeah, if beautiful. it's not yeah, yeah. edible in my case of my pizza yeah but in their defense, you also don't want to torture them yeah <laughs> in their defense they had only had like one bite each and they were just taking their time kind of chewing it waiting for they, were, they probably back. all locked eyes like we shouldn't say anything <laughs> <laughs> I, I can only imagine, I can imagine. <laughs> uh, here's another one and like when i was young and you know right out of school and I was creating our first like Thanksgiving meal. So I don't know if you have experienced this when you were younger and you created your first family Thanksgiving for more than just you. And um, one of the lessons that I learned was timing. Mm -hmm. So like I, you know, I had all the timing wrong for all the different things and there's only so much oven space. I was in a really small place yeah. and so just one tiny oven. So, you know, I got that turkey done. He, he was done and thankfully he looked halfway decent. But then I had all of these other things that I had to make and I had put them in at wrong times. So like by the time it was ready to eat our meal, some of the things were cold, some of them were mm -hmm. done, some of them were burnt like the bread. And I mean, things were just a mess. Mm -hmm. And so this is a pro hack that I've learned and you probably already know this, but one of the things I do if I'm cooking like a major big meal that has multiple dishes and courses is I take sticky notes and I literally put down on like the, I put saran wrapper, all the ingredients together and I'll put a sticky note that says, this is what temperature it needs and this is what time it needs to go in and this is how long it's gonna take to cook. Mm -hmm. And so I have all these sticky notes that list exactly temperature, time, when to put in, et cetera, so that by the time everybody is in, I'm, you know, I'm just following these sticky notes, mm -hmm. everything comes out at perfect time, so everything's nice and warm and, and beautiful for that holiday. So there's a hack for you and it took me years to figure how, how to do that. So there you go. So what I do similar to that, um, I just write down a list exactly what with what you're saying. Right. I just plop them down. Um, I do it the night before because mm -hmm. I'm so um, strict with my scheduling, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I make sure that I'm going to start certain things at certain times and then what else is going to follow after that and the next and the next. So okay. I just kind of write it out on a piece of paper. But the sticky notes out works too. And yeah. that's that's really, yeah. Timing. Well, timing is key. That's how sure. you tell a pro chef from a new chef is the timing of their food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, another thing that I wanted to share with you, a funny story, is when I was about in, in my teens, I want to say, um, I had never cooked beans before and I always watched my mom do it, right? Baked beans or green beans? Mm -hmm. right? So they were boiled beans. Oh, okay. So Mex if you don't know, um, I'm Mexican. So in our culture, we boil our beans. Um, <clears throat> so we can, <laughs> we can have frijoles de la olla. Mm -hmm. So my mom was at home and my dad had told me, um, hey, go start the beans. And here I go, like, get in the kitchen. I thought I was doing my thing, 
pretending like I knew what I was doing, you know, and I start getting my pan and I pour the whole bag of beans onto my pan and I just start like frying them. No water? Mind you, I didn't. I didn't put any water. I didn't put, I put oil and my dad comes in there and my brother and he was like, what are you doing? And I get so red, embarrassed. I go into my room. I'm pretty sure I started crying because I felt like a little, you know, badass or whatever. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> I was about like 13, I think. <laughs> but no, that was one of the funniest memories that I have up to this day. They still make um, they tease me, you know, they tease me about it all the time. You remember the time you were trying to make fried beans somehow? <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Always add your water and, and do the proper measuring. Absolutely. But I'm sure that you probably have a funny cooking story that you would love to share. If if you if it's PC, uh, you can share it. Feel free to comment in the video below. We would love to hear your stories. It makes for... A great time just talking about some of our cooking mishaps and yeah. funny stories and um, awakenings for you with your culinary yeah. degree and yeah. I just I love to cook and I, I hope that you're watching this that that's why you're here with us because you love to cook as well yeah. yeah those are some of our experiences if you want to share what you've gone through or maybe you are going through let us know and in the comments below and always remember, have fun. Mm. Don't be scared. If you ruin it, it's not the end of the world. Alrighty. Thank you for being here. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe so we can keep bringing you great content.